Welcome to another empowering episode of Follow the Leaders, the podcast where we delve into the world of leadership. I'm Jamie Gale, your host, and today's episode is a special solo edition. Join me as I share valuable insights and ideas on leadership, drawing from my own experiences and lessons learned. Hello, I'm your host, Jamie Gale, and today's episode is a really special one. In this episode, I'm going to share a foundational lesson that I learned from my very first quote unquote real job. And this story is not just a nostalgic trip down memory lane for me. It's also a story that has really stuck with me and that I apply to my leadership roles even today. When I was 16, living in Bayside, Wisconsin, just outside of Milwaukee, I got my first real job at a place called Daly's Bakery. And I had been babysitting since I was 11, so I was familiar with the responsibility of taking care of important things for other people, but Daly's was a different ballgame. So for those that aren't familiar with the 90s Milwaukee local scene, Daly's Bakery was sort of a predecessor to the modern Panera and Starbucks. If you were to take those and smash them together, that would be basically what Daly's was. It was a full service cafe, a complete fresh bread store where you could buy loaves of bread and get them sliced or whole, a soup and sandwich shop. You could get salads. You could purchase ready-made food items for home. And working there was a way to earn some high school money, (laughs) but also it was really my introduction to the complexities of running a business, to the service industry, and it really was like a boot camp in multitasking. And I really took away lessons in customer service, financial transactions, inventory management, and the different types of bread. (laughs) So I ended up really, really, really loving this job. And I worked there through high school and I learned so, so much from it. But I want to tell you about one of the early days there, a very humbling experience that happened on one of my first days. I was taking an order from a customer. He was a gentleman in his probably 60s, although I was 16. So who knows? how old he really was. Anyway, he asked for a loaf of sesame semolina bread, which sounds simple, but I was 16 and had really little to no kitchen experience beyond just some like basic snack prep at home. And now as the mom of teenagers, I realize I really owe my mom a shout out and she was always the one that tackled the food making at home. And my dad helped too. So thanks to both of them. But because I had very little experience in the kitchen, I really didn't know what to look for in a sesame semolina bread. And Jill was the owner and the manager. This woman was a force and I really remember her so fondly. She was my boss and she was a fiery, energetic woman that would like race around doing everything from teaching us how to bring people up on the cash register to make cappuccinos, to restock the fridges with sunny D's and everything like that. And I laughed because it's a familiar fun memory from my childhood, but she ran the bakery with a great balance of like attention to detail and also patience for and really trust in the teenagers that she hired. So she had taught me all about the breads that we were selling um, during my training week. And there were also these little signs that were hanging right below the sections of bread. And the bread was like stacked up and nestled together on those big silver shelves. But in that moment, when I looked at the wall of bread (laughs) after the customer ordered, I was just not sure which one was the sesame semolina bread. And it looked a lot like the seven grain bread that was sitting like right next to it and kind of interspersed with it. And I was trying quickly to read the little labels underneath and I was flustered and I definitely grabbed the wrong one. And so Jill noticed and she swooped in and kind of looked at me like, I already explained this to you. And she fixed my error before the customer noticed. And I was a little embarrassed and I promised myself that I would spend more time studying the exterior (laughs) textures of the bread. But I was definitely grateful that she had saved me in that moment because I learned really quickly that in food service, customers can be brutal. So I definitely did not want to mess that up for the customer. Here's the thing. Jill's understanding of the bakery's operations was like a really well-rehearsed symphony. She was the conductor, knowing every note and every pause and what every instrument needed to be doing. And now I was still figuring out like how to hold my violin. And I was taking in a huge influx of new information, learning the layout of the restaurant, remembering customer service protocols, 
mastering the cash register. I was basically treading water in the basics. And this was all very second nature to her. I went on in my later high school years to to train some of the new teenagers on the procedures for like cleaning and closing and there was some food prep. And I always made sure then to reassure them that it takes a while to learn the bread types and everything like that. And that single experience really became a cornerstone in my approach to training and leadership even today. When I'm bringing someone new into my ecosystem, whether it's for my kids' yoga program or one of my after-school program sites or really any of my other businesses, I know that it is really crucial to be nuanced and patient and willing to repeat myself as I onboard team members. Jill probably doesn't remember me and definitely doesn't remember my bread mix-up from the 90s, (laughs) but I do think of her really often and of the lessons that, that that experience taught me. I was reminded of this story a few weeks ago in a discussion with my mastermind group, and they suggested that I share the story here. So here are a few key takeaways that I hold close when I'm training new and also retraining current team members. One, elaborate and be explicit. Remember what is glaringly obvious to you as the leader may not be obvious at all to someone else. We all learn and work in different ways. Don't just tell your staff what to do, explain why they're doing it, and really important, tell them how to find the information out if they forget it. Two, be patient and persistent. New information takes time to soak in. No one becomes an expert overnight. If something needs to be explained more than once, let it be that way. Explain it again. Repetition can be the sign of a really nurturing work environment. Basically, if you can let your staff know that it's okay to forget something and ask again, that creates a really supportive, lower pressure environment where they can be better prepared to ask for help when they need it to succeed and then everybody benefits. Three, be supportive and encouraging. Create an environment where questions are not just tolerated, but encouraged. Like I was saying, praise the success and be constructive about missteps. And the way you respond to their growth curve really sets the stage for their entire journey in your organization. They're going to be willing to learn new things and take on new responsibilities because they know you will be supportive through their learning curve in those processes too. And that makes for a safe place to take risks and learn new tasks and new skills. But that means the next time you're feeling a pang of frustration because one of your team members just hasn't gotten it yet or doesn't seem to have it right, or it feels like maybe they ignored your previous instructions pause and take a breath. And while your eyes might see the final picture and all of the tasks involved, their new eyes are still connecting the dots. So offer them a re-explanation, restate the plan or the steps so they can hear it with fresh ears and find a way to make your requests even more clear, like a checklist or a tutorial can really make a big difference. Eventually, yes, there has to be learning that happens in a job. And that is just part of your staff becoming great performance. They're going to have to master it. But I really try to remember that I need to explain every part of what is going on in my brain if I expect someone else to take something over from me. And I probably need to explain it again. And if down the road a few weeks later or months later, I'm realizing, oh man, I showed them how to do this and I explained exactly where to find the supply or how to do this task. And it kind of feels like they weren't listening or they're ignoring me, I first really tried to take a pause and think maybe they're not. Maybe that little detail of information went in and out of their brain as they were also trying to figure out like how to use the app to clock in and all of the other things that need to happen. There's really only so much that people can take in at any given point. So I try to remember to make things very explicit, to be patient and re-explain when I need to and be understanding and supportive. On a practical level, I ask myself, do they just need a new explanation? Do they need to be retaught? If I think the answer is yes, I'll just go ahead and do it. No need to put them on the spot and quiz them to see if they know. If I'm not sure and I don't want to assume, then I can just ask them and make sure that they know it's okay to need another explanation or it's okay to be shown how to do something again. Team members do well when they can, and sometimes they just need us to remember that they can't take in everything we share with them from the get-go. Sometimes we expect them to know how to properly stack the cups exactly how we like when they're just trying to remember which cabinet they go in. Thank you for joining me on today's episode. If any of this resonated with you, I would love to hear your thoughts. Have you ever faced a similar challenge, either as a newcomer or as a leader? Let's have a conversation. You can reach out to me on Instagram at Jamie Gale LLC, 
or on Facebook there too. I'll make sure it's linked to the show notes, or you can reach out at follow the leaders pod also on Instagram and Facebook. Next time we'll have more leadership tips, fascinating interviews, and a lot more coming your way. Stay tuned, take care, and thanks for listening. Follow the Leaders is produced by Lit Path Studios and music is by Shane Ivers. You can hear more about this show and all the other podcasts at Lit Path Studios by going to www.litpathstudios.com.